But I'm going to jump into the word today. I want you to turn to Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. This word has been on my heart for this moment. And I'm going to jump off from there. And as I was there in worship, and I got to tell you, I, I get to minister and speak all over the world. And it's not just in churches, in, in corporate environments. And, you know, obviously in corporate environments, they know how to party. They have some really cool stuff and fun stuff that they do. But I go to a lot of churches, and there are very few churches that I, I just go, these people know how to worship, right? And I was standing here, and you blessed me so much. I mean, this, this, was, this, was, this was right. This was good. Yeah, and, and it was just so free. And it's such a privilege to be able to, to worship with you guys. Because you don't get that everywhere, and it's sad. But we don't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off from Nehemiah chapter 4 because God put some things on my heart. So we're going to go past my, my multimedia a little bit. We're going to go a little bit past that. So, uh, so I want us to, to kind of to just get into it. But I'm going to read to you the whole chapter 4 of Nehemiah. But I only have one real point. So we're going to read more scripture, but I'm going to preach less points. Is that good? Okay. And... And uh, with, you know, if, if God willing, God willing, we'll be able to get everything that God is giving us today. So we'll be spiritually fed and you'll still have time to be physically fed. <laughs> is that good? If not, we may just fast and be here all day. All right. So we're going to talk about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king of Persia. God gave him this amazing position, not so that he could live it up and say, man, I'm blessed among all the Jews. I'm going to live fat for the rest of my life. That's not what he said, right? That's not what he said. He, he, he realized that his position was prophetic and it was ordained by God for a purpose. All right? God does not elevate or promote you for no reason or just so that you can be content and happy. If the reason why you're seeking for God to do anything in your life to elevate you, and at the end of that is because you want to be content or you want to be comfortable or you want to be fulfilled in some way by that, God may not promote you because he doesn't promote for that reason. He promotes for a purpose. If he puts you in, a, 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 if he puts you in an important place or he gives you an important position or he does important things in your life, it's so that you can be his vessel to someone else, right? And so Nehemiah did. And he asked the king, could he be sent back with the team to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem when he heard that it was broke down? And in a complete miracle, the king of Persia says yes. So he goes about it, comes back, and finds out that the people who lived there before the Jews showed up were now living there after the Jews had left. And they'd already lost the land once to the Jews. They didn't really appreciate them coming back to take it back. They didn't care whether God said that it was theirs or not. They wanted to keep it. And so as Nehemiah started to build the wall, there was a crew of people led by a dude named Sambalat and a dude named Tobiah. And we're going to read about how they went about trying to thwart the work of God. So Sambalat was very angry. I'm reading out the New Living Translation. When he learned that we were rebuilding the wall, he flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, saying in front of his friends and the Sumerian officers, what does these bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they're doing? Do they think they can build the wall in a single day just by offering a few sacrifices? Do they actually think they can make something of stone from a rubbish heap and, a charred, and charred ones at that? And Tobiah the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Anybody know any Sambalats and Tobias? They got a whole lot to say. They just never have a whole lot to say in front of you. Like, don't you wish that it would have been saying this to Nehemiah? But no, you know who they said this in front of? All their friends and the Sumerian officers. You know how you know you're a Sambalat and Tobiah? When you got a whole lot to say, but what you got to say never makes it in front of the person that you're talking about. I'm not Sam Bowen Tobiah, but did you hear about such and such? I mean, I'm not gossiping. I'm just telling you so we can pray for them. You never get to praying. <laughs> she, said, she said a whole lot. But Nehemiah, the Bible says, then he prayed, hear us, O God, for we are being mocked. 
May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may they themselves become God. I love Nehemiah. I want you to hear this prayer. This dude prays the prayers I wish I could pray, not the prayers I feel like I need to pray. Listen to this. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot out their sins, for they have provoked you to anger here in front of the builders. I want to pray like Nehemiah. I want to be like, look, God, don't forget about their sins. Don't forget about, man, let it fall on their heads. May they get hit by a truck today, God. But may they come to know you five minutes before they do so they go to heaven. <laughs> Some of y'all look horrified right now. I don't know if you look horrified because you don't agree with what I'm saying or because I called you out. I don't know. But... I know I'll be praying some of those prayers sometimes. I repent after, but I've. <laughs> and before you condemn me, Nehemiah prayed that prayer too. At last the wall was complete to half its height. Everybody say half its height. Around the entire city for the people had worked with enthusiasm. Everyone say enthusiasm. You get a lot done when you're enthusiastic. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites, and Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. So it was all fun and games, but when their fun and games, their mockery didn't work, then they got pressed a little bit and then they started making plans to beat them up, right? But we prayed to our God. So we prayed again to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. Oh, so the people who had just worked with enthusiasm, built half the wall in no time, all of a sudden now their enthusiasm was replaced by complaining. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. The guys who built half the wall by themselves. Now, I don't know if my math serves me correct, but half is 50%, right? So they built 50%. So they only had 50% left. They had already built what they had left to build, and now they're saying, we can't build it by ourselves, when they just build it by themselves. Attitude is everything, ain't it? Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. Everybody say work. work. Everybody say work. work. Now, everybody say it like you mean it, work. We're going to talk about work in a minute. The Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again they will come from all directions and attack us. I wish I could preach this one sentence to you, but I can't. But it says the Jews who lived near the enemy. Some of the most, oh, I wish I could preach this. Some of the most profound prophetic words of warning in your life will come from believers who look like the enemy more than they look like God. And you will discount the word of the Lord because you don't like their lifestyle and where they're living. Mm. So I placed armed guards behind the lowest parts of the wall in exposed areas. I stationed the people to stand guard by families armed with swords, spears, and bows. Then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, Don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. And fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Those of you didn't say fight for your money, fight for your job, fight for your, all these things. When our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our work. Everybody say work. work. On the wall, but from then on, only half my men worked, while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. And the laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and one hand holding a weapon, one hand supporting the load that two hands used to support, and one hand they were carrying their weapon. Some of you don't think that you can handle the load that you have right now, but not only can you handle it, you can handle it with half the, the effort you think you need because God is with you. Yeah. 
All the builders had a sword built into their side. The trumpeter stayed with me to sound the alarm. Then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people, the work, everybody say work, work. is very spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. So when you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sounding, then our God. Remember he just told them, you, will, you fight for your brothers, your sisters, your friends. But then he says, I was just telling you that to motivate you, but actually our God will fight for us. We worked. Everyone say work. Early and late from sunrise to sunset, and half the men were always on guard. I also told everyone living outside the walls to stay in Jerusalem. That way they and their servants could help with guard duty at night and work during the day. And during this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me ever took off our clothes. In other words, during that time when we were on alert, none of us got caught slipping. We carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. 